Tara should be the next 007. You're what? sweet. Uh, I'm Irish. <laughs> I'm not really about... I mean, I see Bond movies. Yes, I do. But I don't really see myself starring in a yeah, franchise that it, glorifies the British Empire. Yeah. 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 Um, not going to work out. Little, little uncomfortable to there um yeah it's but thank you <laughs> yeah oh my god you see that yeah so it's sean connery is scottish yes scotland is still part of the united kingdom right i don't know how good you are with history <laughs> but kick the fuckers <laughs> out <laughs> um so yeah for those of you who aren't following along and this this has just been man baby central um a yeah. woman, uh, I forget her name. An I apologize. Awesome woman. I apologize. She played uh, Monica, not Ma Maria Rambo. Maria Rambo. Monica's, Monica's her daughter. Mother. She played uh, Maria Rambo in Captain Marvel. She is uh, been chosen. And I didn't know she was British until I saw the special features on Captain Marvel. I know, right? I was like, she's been British this whole time. It is so weird for a British person to be able to do a good English, uh, American English accent. Well, it's honestly, like, I was just as gobsmacked when I found out David Tennant was Scottish <laughs> and not just regular old English. But yeah, she has been uh, selected to be the next 007. Not the next James Bond. Right. But the next 007. She's uh, going to be in the next Daniel Craig movie as the person that gets the designation 007. Lashana Lynch, that's her name. Um, My how, concern with this is yes that she's going to start the movie like Bond has retired and she is the new 007 and sometime before the end of the movie they're going to kill her ass so that he can come back and be 007. That's or, my worry. Or they could kill James Bond. That would be great. That would be that would be the one no one's expecting. That would be the twist. My concern is that they're not going to do that. Yeah. But oh my God, she's not replacing James Bond. She's just got his old job. But oh, the on the man babies just oh, they're losing. so angry. Oh my God, and that's just a woman, a black woman. Oh my God, a black woman from that fucking feminist movie last year. I I was just waiting for some for some of them to say, well, how can she do that? She's American. No, you idiot. She has more right to James Bond than most of you do. Yes, yeah, she's not. She's not American. But again, that was a surprise to me. She was very convincingly American. Yeah. Uh, I, I screw them. Screw them. Joke them if they can't take a photo, man. <laughs> We're mad about Black Ariel, too. Because we got to be historically accurate about fucking mermaids. Uh, mermaids! What the... That's what? How many mermaids have you met? I have met exactly. Every mermaid you met, you've met has been white because I've never met any fucking mermaids. I have I have met exactly zero mermaids. Yeah, exactly and zero. And I feel like the waters of the world that could support mermaids that are not too cold more inclined are to brown not people. Really white people areas. Yeah, yeah. Mermaids in the North Atlantic are basically seals. <laughs> like you have the the black Irish that are the legend they're actually descended from the Moors when they sacked Ireland, but the old legend is that they're descended from the seals. Those are your fucking white mermaids. You didn't know that? History is weird. All right, they let's call them black, black Irish is Irish people with dark hair and dark eyes. Let's get the nonsense underway now that we've babbled on for a while. Here we go. Intro. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, crazy. yes, I got that story, everybody. Yes, yeah. I got that story. So we will get to that story. <laughs> Chill. We'll get there. Like, even my husband sent us that story. I think he found it before everyone else, though. 
But uh, there, that wasn't the only stupid thing that happened this week. I, I, actually, I wouldn't call that stupid. I would just call that what the... Yeah, yeah, that, that pretty much fills our show That's title me. perfectly. Um, but before we get there, there was other stuff um, from the department of this fucking guy. Our first story comes from uh, Lake St. Clair, Michigan. Um... Now the, uh, the 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 headline leaves a bit to. We'll have to explain this one a bit. Lake Saint Clair boater goes overboard, leaving date adrift. Um, it was a date made for summer, a leisurely clu- cruise, dinner on shore, and back on a tranquil lake. Then he went overboard with the boat still running into Lake Saint Clair, leaving her her behind. She, oh, fran- no. she frantically called 911, unsure if he was alive, where she said uh, where she was and how to stop the cruiser. Did he fall in? Jump? It's unclear. And police are as perplexed as anyone, even after safely retrieving them. Um, we're extremely surprised to have found him alive. Sheriff's Deputy uh, uh, the McCam- Mc- Macomb County Sheriff's Marine Division and dive team uh, arrived Monday, where they found the woman, uh, who has not been identified from police. Uh, from police, by police. Hours later, the man would find police a feat they would say is unusual. Here's the bit that's this fucking guy. The woman told deputies the 43-year-old man from St. Clair Shores invited her out on a 40-foot boat for drinks, and she agreed. They spent most of the day on the lake and stopped at a restaurant. After their meal, she asked the man, who was not identified, to take her back to the shore. That's when the date went adrift. And who wrote this? Oh, come on. Sarah Rahal, Charles E. Ramirez. No, 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 it didn't go adrift. She believed the male was up, became upset because he then left the captain's seat while the boat was moving and jumped into the lake. <laughs> so what happened was on a date, she says, this is nice. I'd like to go home now. He realizes he's not getting laid. So he jumps off the boat, which she can't pilot, and leaves her ass there. This fucking guy. Forty-three years old, so this is not like some twenty-one-year-old idiot. No, this is a much older idiot. Yeah, this is a fucking asshole. <clears throat> this is this fucking guy. I don't care how many drinks you buy. I don't care what kind of dinner you buy. She is not obligated to touch your penis. But 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 it's a boat. I put her on the boat. It's a boat. Like I know that's hard for you guys but, to accept. I know. But it's- it's- Life oh, is unfair. Wait, wait. And even if you buy her 16 fucking drinks, she doesn't have to touch your penis. The, but the, the boat was on the boat. See, that is, that's different because boat. Take a good hard look at the motherfucking boat. <laughs> and like, was it his boat? I, it doesn't say. I may, it might have been a rental. You improved your situation. No, no, that is not. Now your penis isn't touched and you don't have your boat. This is even better. He told authorities he fell overboard miles from the county boathouse where the Marine Division is located and swam to Strawberry Island. Unable to locate anyone on the island, he commandeered a boat Mm -hmm. and drove to the Marine Division on the lake. Do you know what's ironic? We were just discussing... I have something in my eye, sorry. We were just discussing The Little Mermaid. This is closer to the real ending of The Little Mermaid. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he fucked off. I don't know if you guys know the real ending of The Little Mermaid, but, like, the prince actually chooses some other chick, and the mermaid is going to murder them in their sleep. Yes. But she can't bring herself to do it, so she stabs herself and jumps into the sea and becomes ocean mist. Except in this case, it was this guy jumped into the sea and stole a boat. Yeah. 
This is the shitty version of The Little Mermaid. Yeah, I, what the, okay. The uh, Marine, uh, Macomb County Sheriff's Sergeant Renee, Renee Yax. Listen to this. He didn't steal it. He only took it for his own rescue. Um. Mm hmm. Um. No. No. Yeah. This, this fucking guy. He's probably on Reddit right now talking about what a bitch she was. He's on Am I the Asshole? He, yeah, yeah, that's where he is. He's on Am I the, the ass Asshole for jumping off my own boat after a girl wouldn't sleep with me? No, you're an asshole for a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of problems, dude. All right, next up, this is this is sadly more our wheelhouse. Um, God damn it. Ah, uh, Berea, Kentucky. Man in underwear arrested at animal shelter after fighting invisible nemesis. Okay. A Maria man was arrested after police found him allegedly in his underwear at a local animal shelter fighting someone who was not there. I don't remember this part in Far From Home. <laughs> oh, according to our news partners, uh, Aaron Nolan was outside the Madison County Animal Shelter in his underwear throwing things at passing motorists. Court documents say Nolan was screaming at someone who was not there, not making any sense. He told officers he hadn't slept in weeks and that his heart was not beating. Nolan was taken into custody and charged with public intoxication of a controlled substance. I wonder what that substance was. Here's the thing. I work in an animal shelter and I work customer facing at the animal shelter. I am an adoption and tours person. So like this guy would be my fucking problem. I mean, not really. I would go and get probably the executive director whose office is right there and be like, could we, could you, you're larger than me. Could you help me with this person? But like. No, I'm sitting here. What, what could that substance be? Top five answers on the board. hundred people surveyed. What yeah. was the substance? Show me math. Ding, 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 ding. Number one answer. Yeah, like, the people at the animal shelter are not there to deal with your dumb ass. No. You're not cute enough. Like, I work with cats. They do dumb ass shit. They're little assholes sometimes, but they're really cute. And they get away with it. But not in their underwear fighting invisible people. I mean... Let's be fair, cats totally fight invisible people. That, yeah, okay. But they're more adorable about it. But exactly! Yeah. There's one little cat, she's paraplegic, she purrs and bites me. She purrs while she bites me. Grady does that too. It's she's unsettling. She's cute, and She gets away with it. Yeah, he's I'm cute. I'm supposed to let her get away with it, but I do, because she's cute. <sighs> Folks, ever it's like... You know all of those McGruff the drug dog and and yeah. uh, dare to stay off drugs and if they showed if they showed videos of this in high school health class nobody would do drugs nobody would fucking do drugs they make drugs seem kind of cool in those videos <laughs> like do you want to be the burnout hanging out outside school fuck yes yeah That's cool they need to be like do you need to do you want to be in your underwear outside the pound fighting an invisible nemesis yelling at cars there is definitely one person in the class who would say yes and everyone would yeah, look at them probably him. but yeah it's it's just i mm, meth is not a good drug no if you ever needed a reason don't do, i hope my show if there's any good i have done in all the years of doing this i hope the one thing my show has taught you all is don't do meth it's don't. Apparently, we also are teaching people English, so that's terrifying. Yeah, I got a tweet about that. Not just people English. I, I don't know how to. Uh, do I still have the link to that? I do. I think I do. Let me. Somebody said it. we. One of their relatives or friends. 
you start no. similar English. And I was like, I'm so sorry. They're probably really fucking foul now. No, no. Stepdaughter. <laughs> okay. Ten. They know all the swears. Ten year old stepdaughter. <gasps> I didn't see that she was ten. Why are you letting her watch this? That's not okay. <laughs> We're teaching a ten year old fucking English. And a lot of weird fetishes. <laughs> Like, these are responsibilities that we shouldn't have. No, we should not. We're not There's qualified for this. Neither of us has human children. That's true. Don't let us raise your children. No. Because uh, we're not equipped. No. All right. Next up. Speaking of children, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> um, hey, Tara. What's worse than one kid stealing a car from their parents and going on a drive? Several? Four kids! Police stopped four kids who drove SUV 600 miles. Holy shit! Can oh, well, it's Australia. <laughs> No, no. You probably have to learn how to drive at like four to fight off the snakes and the spiders. Like, no, no, no. I mean, it's more holy shit. It's Australia because you know they're fighting off the snakes and the spiders. That's more holy right. shit. Right. Canberra, Australia. Four children aged ten to fourteen packed fishing rods in a parent's FUV, SUV, left a farewell note. Then drove more than 600 miles down the Australian East Coast before they were stopped by police the next day after two fuel thefts and one aborted pursuit. When the children, I love this part. When the children were stopped by police, they locked the door and refused to get out. <laughs> wow. Now, this does sound like something you would have done. <laughs> They packed up the car, left a note, left, and then when the police went after them, they were like, fuck you. I'm not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I would have as a kid, yeah. Excuse me, get out of the car. No! Make me. Make me! They did. They broke the window. I, I was going to say, you got a thing that breaks the window. You come in. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to get out. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> oh. Oh, police I'm counting on that. Police were not sure which child or children drove or why they left Rockham Rockhampton in Queensland state on Saturday. Um, Williams said they possibly shared the driving. It's a long way. I couldn't imagine one person actually driving that way in two days. I don't know, man. Have you met 10 year olds? They are hyper as fuck. Yeah. Um, they got stamina. The children are suspected of failing to pay for fuel at Outback gas stations in the Queensland town of Banana. That's a town? Okay. I didn't know there was a town named Banana in Australia. And the New South Wales town of Warialda? 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 It's spelled like Wario, but Warialda. Um, yeah. They were also chased by police uh, in the New South T Wales town of Glen in Innes, where a 13-year-old was suspected to be driving. There was a short pursuit. Uh, due to the age of the driver and the road conditions, they terminated the pursuit. Smart cops. Yeah. Um, the you want to be in a high-speed chase with children. I, I just... Australian Stranger Things is hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> true like you watch that show and you're like i grew up in the 80s and my parents knew where the fuck i was yeah yeah like, none of these parents like joyce disappeared for two days your no children, your child has been abducted before yeah you just fuck off like they're not for a town where that kind of shit happens there nobody's nearly as concerned for their kids as they should be i just Mother, fucking four of them. They're, they're grouping together. Well, like, were they running away? No, they like, were just going to go fishing. They left a note. Just going on vacay? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Bye, Mom. Gone fishing. 
No! We took the car! Uh, All of Australia is like the fucking Hunger Games. They stole $100 in gas. Uh. Uh. I just... Did it. They you don't got know if children are related or how they knew each other. They could have been fucking summoned somewhere. This, this, this is like... This is a young adult novel, I'm sure. I'm sure that there's a young yeah. adult novel. This is a good writing prompt. This is like Stand it's By Me. Kids ages 10 to 14 in a car with fishing poles in Australia. Holy, sh holy shit, this is like Stand By Me. Were they going to find a dead body? It'll surprise nobody to know that I've not seen that movie. I know that Will Wheaton's in it and one of the kids dies at some point. But I haven't seen that movie. Who are, are you? Are you surprised? It's, it's not even like a freaking sci-fi. It's Stand By Me. Come on. I just saw the original Terminator like two weeks ago because he made me watch it. I'd only ever seen T2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this... I mean, I'll admit I've never seen Stand By Me either. <gasps> Watch it, you two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, our next story I'll is find parody. We can watch that. That movie's about four little boys, baby. <laughs> the porn parody is definitely illegal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this next one is as heartwarming as our show can get. I I'm oh. just, I'm just gonna put that out there. This is. This is as heartwarming as we get, people. This is our human interest segment. Drunk man uses Uber to rescue injured baby bird. Aw, look at the little bird. Ogden, Utah, a wildlife rescue in northern Utah, is giving props to a man who found a creative way to rescue an abandoned baby bird while out drinking with friends. Staff at the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center of Northern Utah say they received a recall for a man who had a few too many, but discovered a baby lesser goldfinch struggling on the ground. Hello. 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 <laughs> I, I, hello, this is a bird. Is <laughs> what do? Hi. A bird. I am David. How are you? I is bird. Hi. How are, what, do you have nachos? Hi. <laughs> an hour later, the bird arrived at the center by itself in an oh. Uber. That baby bird traveled in style. Staff later learned the man had called the car because he was too intoxicated to drive. <laughs> okay, friend, props for knowing your limits and not driving drunk. But this is kind of weird, yo. I hope he gave that driver five stars. <laughs> Can you can you imagine being that driver and be like, so where are we going? Bird! You guys hate the bird? It's bird. Hey, the bird. Here's the bird. Uh, what? I kind of love this. <laughs> I know. I kind of feel like this is some shit that drunk me would do. <laughs> Like, if I was shit-faced and found a little wounded animal, I would definitely call an Uber to take the wounded animal somewhere. <laughs> Not ride with the wounded animal. Just put the bird in the Uber and send him on his way. I would probably go with the bird. You would go This guy was like, okay, buddy, it was nice meeting you. Fly, little bird. You have yourself a good weekend, okay? You take care. <laughs> I'll call you Monday. Bye-bye. I just get the little bird. <laughs> he's so cute. I, I hope he's okay. I don't, I don't I don't know. They named him Petey. He was thin and dehydrated. Should be released into the wilderness within a few weeks. So oh. I guess he's gonna be okay. The department of a gun is not a remote control for life. Kansas City woman fired gun after calling DMV weight ridiculous. The wait is always ridiculous at the DMV. That's their job. Please say you think their job is to deal with all your car legalities. It's not. It's to make you wait. 
Police say a woman upset about the line at the Department of Motor Vehicles office in Kansas City went outside and fired a gun after being asked to leave. Officer Darren Snap says no one was injured. It says around 11.20 a.m. Tuesday, the woman announced that, quote, the wait time is ridiculous. Snap said staff asked her to leave because she was being, quote, loud and obnoxious. It says the woman then said she was going to get a gun. Snap says an off-duty officer who heard a gunshot approached the woman and ordered her to put the gun down. The woman has been jailed, but no charges were immediately filed. That's the part that's just blowing my mind. It's Missouri. Do you just fire guns? As far as I can tell, yes. It's fucking Missouri, man. Have you ever been to Missouri? Because I've been to Missouri Briefly. twice. And been that shit Lewis. is like a dystopia mixed with a John Steinbeck novel. It's fucking scary. I just... Every hour, everybody's probably everybody's in the channel is going. She was probably white, wasn't she? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you don't get away with firing a gun if you're black. Then they murder you. Yeah, they don't. They don't tell you to calmly put the gun down at that point. No. Just it. How does this help your situation at all? It doesn't. As. I mean, like just go scream at your steering wheel like a normal person because you're frustrated. Yeah, punch the wall or whatever. Because I don't even understand how guns make a decent catharsis. Like, you're not releasing any of that energy. You're just making a loud noise. Right. Like, how do you feel better? All you did was press a button. I just... I... It's not a fucking remote control. It doesn't make things happen. The only I thing mean, it does. Yeah, but they're not the things you want they're to happen. They're usually not the things you're going for. It's like if you push the mute button on your remote, only instead of the TV muting, it blows the fuck up. Yeah. That's how it works. It's a very bad remote control. And in a country where we have a mass shooting every 20 minutes or so... You firing a gun in a public place because you're annoyed, it's going to make people a little fucking nervous. Oh my God, she's so lucky that a good guy with a gun wasn't just hanging around. For fucking real, because it's Missouri. Like, toddlers have guns there, I think. <laughs> I can't believe he's not yelling at me for any of this, but... The, five, uh, really the five-year-olds all have 22s. What yeah. the hell? Ugh. All right. Now it's time for that story. That story. The one you've all said. We've been doing this for so long, and we've had some amazing stuff over the years. I'm just, I don't really know how we're going to top this one. This is a thing we haven't seen before. Never. We've seen a lot of shit. This is brand new this is a someone got super creative on you know what i was thinking of when i heard when i heard about the story do you remember that that old game that you play at walmart called what three things yes here's for those of you who are not aware of this here's what you do you go into walmart at 2 a.m because they're 24 hour and there's hardly anyone at the right although i don't know if it even works anymore because they close down the registers and they make you go to the remote ones so yeah, this might be a, be a relic now. What you would do is you would go through the store, and the challenge is to find three items that purchased together would baffle, startle, and or frighten whoever had to check you out, like a watermelon, a vacuum, and as many a, a big big bottle of KY. That sort of thing, and that's a pedestrian one right there. Yeah, you could get real creative. You know, just inflatable, you know, dolls, inflatable, like, <laughs> pool dolls and shit. And like a chicken, a baby dress, and a karaoke machine. Yeah, you know? 
You can't do that anymore because now they have all the remote. Uh... So this I mean, store. You can still do it at like 2.30 in the afternoon. But it's not the same. Because they, they, then they have backup. If they're just by, there by themselves, they're stuck. They have to deal with your weirdness. <laughs> so that's why I thought of what three things when I thought about this story. A traffic stop turns up whiskey, a gun, and a rattlesnake. And that was before they found the uranium. Before the uranium, it was just a country song. <laughs> Police officers pulled over Stephen Jennings in Guthrie, Oklahoma. They searched the car and got a lot more than they bargained for. Jennings was pulled over about 11 a.m. after an officer noticed his car tags were expired. First mistake. He alerted officers that there were a few other issues likely to arise. There was a gun in the vehicle for starters, so he's very forthcoming at this point. <laughs> Which is good, because you don't want to get fucking shot. However, his passenger, Rachel Rivera, uh, Rivera uh, was charged with possession of a firearm after a former felony conviction. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Then, police found the car had been reported stolen. Began to dig a little deeper. Their discoveries, one bottle of Kentucky Deluxe whiskey and one rattlesnake. So let's just pause here at the rattlesnake. Um, <laughs> do you know how the officer was like, sir, is there anything you want to tell me you have in the car? Anything dangerous? Anything sharp? Anything needles? Anything that could poke me? I got a gun. Well, no, sir. That's not going to poke me. Um. <laughs> I think I might have a pencil. <laughs> oh, yeah. The rattlesnake. Oh, right. Jimmy. <laughs> I'm going to put Jimmy. He's, he's a teddy bear. Don't worry about him. <laughs> I can't afford a car alarm. So I just keep Jimmy. Nobody steals my car. The rattlesnake, it should be noted, was happily stored in terrarium in the back seat. They wouldn't just roam in the vehicle. Okay, that's kind of a relief. Good. But, you know, rattlesnake. Um. Then they found one more thing. A canister of radioactive powdered uranium. Sure. Where the fuck do you even get that? That's a good... You know what? We probably shouldn't go too deep into that on a show on the internet. Yeah. We probably you shouldn't... Probably on some kind of watch list. Yeah. Well, like... Can you even get that commercially? What? Powder, radioactive powdered uranium? No. Like, that's not a thing you can buy anywhere. No. Were they going to mix it with the whiskey? I was super curious where he got a hold of that. that yeah, that's, that's... Maybe they were trying to make a super snake? This, this is like... Well, first thing I'm reminded of is the ending of Repo Man, but that's something different entirely. This is, at what point are you in this situation, driving down the highway, your friend in the passenger seat is a felon with a gun, you got a bottle of whiskey, a rattlesnake in your back seat, and oh yeah, you have a bottle of cancer. Did they stop Arlo? <laughs> Just be sitting there going, wow. I'm thinking the plan was radiate the snake. Get drunk, have the snake bite you, get superpowers. And if the superpowers get out of control, you gotta shoot me. Except now, you and the snake and your friend with the gun, you all have cancer! Yeah. That's I only a superpower for Deadpool. I, I mean, if, if have you have you watched Chernobyl? Purposefully, no, because no. I don't need to be stressed the fuck out that oh, much. Jesus, that show. The reason I stopped watching The Handmaid's Tale. 
As if I, I just watch the news if I want to be stressed the fuck out. As if I wasn't worried enough about radiation before. Yeah. Just the well, whole. Well, I, I have him for that. It's like. It's like someone has an itty bitty microscopic fifty cal, and it's shooting subatomic particles everywhere. Just barrages of subatomic. It never runs out of ammo. And all those little subatomic particles are going right through you. And they're taking out chunks. You can't see them, but they're taking out chunks. And the chunks they're taking out are out of your DNA. Which is what makes your DNA go, okay, let's do something new. And that's where cancer comes from. Let's try something different today, boys. I'm feeling lucky. We lost the instructions. Wing it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we're fine. We've done this before, sure. I really, really want to know where the fuck they got a canister of uranium. Well, hell, I don't know. If we did. I don't know. If we didn't cover this one, but there was a uh, was it Yellowstone National Park? They found uh, three cans of radioactive ore. They've just been sitting around, unsecured in in one of the park buildings for years and it was wow. in the museum and people were walking by it on the tour yes i remember that yeah. now so you're asking where did they get uranium apparently we leave it lying around now <laughs> just forget it and leave it places <clears throat> fuck maybe they got it at the yellowstone gift shop jesus yeah that that just that concerns me but I'm going with the superhero theory. He wanted to be Snake Man. This is, it's... Rattle Man? This, this is a weird point in life to find yourself at. It's sort of like that... That, uh... that record scratch. I bet you're wondering how I got here. Yes! Yes, we are. It's, I was thinking of talking heads, and you may say to yourself, My God, <laughs> well... how did I get here? <laughs> yeah. Like, this story needs a fucking follow-up. Seriously! Because we need more information. This doesn't need a follow-up. This needs a Netflix series. Like, what was he doing with the uranium? That also concerns me. Why did you have that? Don't know. There aren't a lot of uses for it, and almost none of them are benign. Ugh. In fact, I don't know of a single benign use for radioactive uranium. There are a few that have to do with medicine and science and stuff regarding that. You can, like, you know, there are uses for it that aren't, you know, cancer or nuclear weapons. Just not for the kind... I don't think he was sitting there going, you know, when I get home, I'm making an atomic clock. Yeah, I, I, I'm not thinking... I don't think that was the, the reason for it. Like, I'm going to solve cold fusion. <laughs> So I guess I guess the first thing we learned tonight is you never know where life's gonna take you. You just never fucking know. You never know. It's it's you it's pull an, over it's a car because the tags are expired, and you wind up in an episode of the fucking Twilight Zone. It's like the song says, "Life is a highway." Totally the point of that song. Um, we've learned yet again. A gun is not a remote control for life. No. It will not get you your desired outcome. It, it's... It... A gun is, however, a thing that kills people. Yeah. And not a toy. Stop playing with them. We've learned probably the only valid use for Uber. <clears throat> <laughs> Saving baby birds? Impromptu animal rescue. Ubered. Tara, what did you do? What did you gave do? you an episode title? What did you what did you do? What did you do? Um We've learned that kids that you know shit like uh Stand By Me and Stranger Things, not quite as outlandish as you may think. Because they will do this crap. Watch fucking kids, man. <laughs> watch them. 
Otherwise, they'll go out and star in a teen drama. You gotta hang a bell on those little fuckers. Did they rock, paper, scissors to see who gets the dry? Maybe. We've learned, yet again, we're teaching you probably one of the most important lessons of your life. Meth is the worst thing. Don't the fucking worst, do it. Worst thing. Don't do it. There's there are so many better drugs. There's I I would you know what? I I I would advise you to go you know for acid before meth, and that's saying a lot. I mean I haven't done any of the drugs, but I'm sure almost all of them are better than meth. Don't do heroin because it's super addictive and you will die. I didn't even like pot all that much, and it's still better than meth. And finally, we've learned just, it, it's that a date is not a transactional situation. You are not trading for someone touching your pee-pee. Women are not ATMs where you put in niceness and sex comes out. That's not, that's not how we work. Though that really would improve Wells Fargo's uh, public image. Would it? 